Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to show you a modern gaming setup, what consoles to go with, why you should go with them, and the reasons why I truly feel like this is a great setup for anybody. It will also include a lot of your personal choices. So let's get into the video right now. It's me, it's me, T-Belly here. Beautiful. What's up YouTube? It's me, your guy, T-Belly here. King of Retro, today I'm going to show you guys about the, about the modern, and I don't mean the retro game room man cave, no, 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 just a modern gaming setup, not for streaming, for having a TV and games on your TV, and not have it be somewhat of a distraction to your household, to your guest, to your future guest. You want something to be, I guess, what's a good word to use? Cool. You want something to look cool, right? So I'm going to give you guys a great way to have many generations of gaming at your fingertips at all times without having this behind you. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of people don't like this. They really don't. A lot of people don't like this. Look at all of, all of that stuff. I love it. It's in my closet. There's a reason it's in my closet. I don't have too much space out of here to put it. I live in New York City. And let's just say our apartments, meaning our whole household are usually the size of a midwest home's living room true story true story look it up online so let's get into this one what made me make this video and is this video for everybody obviously this video is not for everybody but for gamers since we do have gameplay and gaming on this channel and i started as my a retro gamer primarily on youtube i have a lot of knowledge and experience with this type of stuff and i have great direction i'm a person that is very outgoing, I'm on the dating market, I do cool things, fun things, I don't just stay at home playing games all the time, it's just something I like to do a lot lately, but it's not, it's not my whole life, you know, it's just a part of my life, and I make content, but a lot of people don't make content, and they just like to game, and they like to have different generations, so this video is for you, if you have a wife, a girlfriend, or a boyfriend if you're a girl, so a significant other to say the least, I'm going to help you set up a cool cool setup that is not too nerdy to scare people away but it's also welcoming for the nerds the fellow nerds that we find along so everybody wins here so let's get started obviously you're going to want a television latest 4k tv ultra hd you need to have the good stuff gotta have something good you know the bigger the screen the better you know i have a 55 inch and i i need to go bigger i have two 55 inches in my home i need to go bigger so that's something you need to figure out for your space and how cool you want your TV to look. That starts there with the TV. Now, you want one of those modern gaming consoles. You want a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox series. Straight up. No ifs, no buts. You want to go for the X. If you have a 4K TV, you want to go for the X. But there are exceptions where you might go with the S. It's all digital. It's very compact. It's all white. So you can match a white room setup compared to the black of the Xbox series where PlayStation offers a white console with a black design in the middle but they also offer shells to give you an all black console or other colors they do have other colors for the PlayStation 5 so you want to start with that next gen console you have to have that you got to have the latest tech one thing I always complain about a lot of content creators that complain about the PlayStation 5 not having any games a lot of those people don't even play games they casually own PlayStation 5s and it's just a cool thing to have. You know, it's one thing for a casual person to have a PS5 and have the friends come over and say, hey, check out Miles Morales or Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart or maybe NBA or WWE 2K22, the latest sports game. But it's a different story when you're a hardcore gamer and you buy a console just for clout. But thankfully, this video is not for that person. So you want that console. You want that casual gamer or that core gamer to have one of those main two consoles. Having both of them is a plus, but not a must. Again, we're trying to save space here. We're trying to get everything in as little space as possible. So T-Belly picks the PlayStation 5 for myself. Suggestion, PlayStation 5 digital because it looks a little nicer with the design and you don't have to have these things behind you or anywhere in your house. So I go with the PlayStation 5 digital. Where do we go next? Because I'm going with 4, and you're going to see why I'm going with 4. A lot of these modern TVs have 
apps to run your TV shows and your programs. So I'm thinking in that nature, we don't have cable boxes anymore. We don't really use those things, but you can still have one. I have a, a box right now that is all digital. I just plug it in and it runs off the Wi-Fi in the house straight up. Wi-Fi or if it's the main, my living room TV, it runs off the actual modem. So I don't have wiring going through my whole apartment. I just have one wire going out from outdoors into my unit. But let's say you don't have that. You still have three slots left. And this is where I'm thinking, like, nobody really uses cable boxes much anymore. I do, but most people don't. Get yourself a Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is a console that does a lot. First off, it's a console that you can just grab off your dock, lay in bed, and play some Pokemon. Play some Metroid, some Mario, some Zelda. Or you want to be a little bit more hardcore, you can play some Grand Theft Auto. Finally, some Doom. Right on your Nintendo Switch. That's all possible. Dragon Ball Fighters, they got that covered. You know, they have so many different IPs on the Switch. But the main reason to have the other consoles is because there are franchises like Call of Duty and Madden that you cannot get on the Switch. There's a lot of late new gen games like Elden Ring that are not available on a Nintendo Switch. So that's why I always suggest the main consoles first the next gen have the latest tech and have that ready to go. But Nintendo Switch is right behind it. It, ha it offers a unique experience. And I think one of the coolest things about having a Nintendo Switch, you have your core games like your Breath of the Wild, but you also have your casual games like Animal Crossing, Mario Party, and even Switch Sports, where anybody can pick up those games and play. So this is a perfect fun time for having friends over after the bar, grabbing a few drinks, you have guys and gals, everybody hanging around, maybe smoking some, some weed or drinking some alcohol, playing music, and there's a few people in the living room probably having a few rounds of bowling and Switch Sports. There's a lot of cool stuff that the Switch can do if you want to say, hey, I'm in the mood for some Legend of Zelda on the NES. Well, whip out one of those Switch Nintendo controllers and there you go. Knock yourself on, play some Zelda 1. And the coolest thing about that, that same scenario also works with SNES, N64 and Sega Genesis. All four of those retro consoles have libraries and controllers, hardware controllers to match them on the Nintendo Switch, which makes it amazing. If you don't believe me, I mean, I have videos right here. Boom. There you go. You can check out the videos of me unboxing these beautiful pieces of hardware, at least the Sega Genesis one. <laughs> so next up, we got the modern consoles covered, the latest gen tech, the casual all-around console like the switch is also versatile because it can be docked and played in handheld but next up i want to introduce the mr fpga oh. Oh! <laughs> yeah i said it retro gaming master king of retro game collector t bizzle yeah, I said it. The Mr. FPGA. Yes, I said it. I said it, guys. The Mr. is a phenomenal product. It is microscopically small. No, not microscopically small. That's an exaggeration, but it is a small device, guys. It's really cool. It has so many options to connect. You can get those Saturn controllers that I reviewed a while ago. Boom! Had to throw that one in there, even though nobody likes that video. <laughs> but uh, you could throw those controllers on there. Almost anything with a USB, you can put into that damn, what's the name of it? Mister. You can put it all in the Mister. The Mister most recently updated to have the Sega 32X. So it has all of these retro game consoles. It has arcade games. And unlike a retro pie, it's not emulating. It's literally simulating everything from the original boards that's why the library for some games is a little smaller than others because everything has not been ripped yet and copied and developed for the course they have the playstation core in beta form right now as we're speaking and it's dropping any week now sega saturn is coming atari jaguar is coming but they already have all the way back from the vectrex going all the way up to arcade games that ran on the Sega, not Sega, the Capcom CPS2 board. They have fighting games. The Marvel vs. Capcom, it's right there. Part 1 is, and everything before that's there. Alpha 3 is there. Street Fighter 2 is there. 
Contra, you want the arcade Contra, you want Bubble Bobble, Alter Beast, arcade games, they are all there in their original purest form, and there's more coming, like the Turtles arcade game, it's coming, they're ripping the board as we speak and getting that ready for the core, so the Mister is a great thing to have, it puts so many games in your hand, it doesn't take up space, and it's one of those space savers where it's like, hey guys, you want to play some games, what kind of games you want to play, hey, I, we can play that. We can play on the Mister. And it goes as far as getting snack adapters. Snack adapters are USB ports in one end that go in your Mister. But the other port is an input for the controller of your choosing choice. Yes, if you get a snack adapter for SNES, you can play original SNES controllers on your Mister. The same goes for NES, Sega Genesis. The list goes on and on. So it's, it's as awesome as having a closet with a box full of controllers and snack adapters and that little box is your key to hours and years of enjoyment right in your home with the little device called a mister it's beautiful no input lag it's called a fpga for a reason and last but certainly not least this is i think the coolest part this is where collecting comes into play there's a big boom of vinyl vinyl's been rocking for a few years your boy is a laser disc collector. Yeah, I'm into laser disc. I only have two. I have the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie and Scarface on laser disc. So hey, if anybody has laser disc and you want to just get rid of them, send them my way. I'm definitely collecting laser disc. I don't even have a laser disc player yet, but I have my eyes on one. I'm watching it. It's gonna be connected real soon. These are things that people collect. Even CDs are about to get a boom. They're starting to make some noise with CDs. So there are cool collectible retro things that people have. So this is where the fourth thing comes into play. Since I'm talking about a gaming setup, this is the retro console of your choice. Yes, you pick a console. You pick one. In this video, I'm going to use the Sega Dreamcast. Yes, I'm going to show you right now a Sega Dreamcast with HDMI out and that is freaking awesome that thing looks phenomenally beautiful I mean the Dreamcast is definitely a good pick it's a system that has a pretty decent sized library many hit titles many multiplayer casual games but it also has the core games like the Sonic Adventure and the Shenmue which you could play on the console Grand Theft Auto 2 Originally, back in the days when Grand Theft Auto 2 was out, that's the version I played. I played through GTA 2 on Sega Dreamcast. So while my friends were playing on PS1, I had the better graphics and the better frame rate on the Sega Dreamcast. Because I'm a GTA fan. And it's pretty awesome. I'm, so I'm going to use the Dreamcast as the example. So right now I'm going to show you a Snack Adapter. Sorry, the, Ki the uh, Kiko. The Kiko Adapter. Not the Snack. The Snack is with the Mr. The Kiko Adapter. The Kaiko Adapter, actually. I think it's called the Kaiko, and it's something that gives me an HDMI out, which is beautiful for the Dreamcast. It works really well. Not as good as the HDMI mod, but HDMI mods are also very pricey, very expensive. I have an NES HDMI out mod, and it's beautiful. You know, I would love to have one for the PS1 one day. Uh, I actually have access to one, which I use for footage that I'm capturing. So there's cool, there's cool exceptions. Like I said, pick the console of your choice. N64, anybody? Get that HDMI out, you'll get your best picture. So pick the retro console of your choice, the one that you have the most attachment to. And there you go with a little collection. Get about five to ten games of, of your favorites and have them there ready. It won't take up too, too much space, unlike one of these shelves full of games. You can put it somewhere, it's somewhat of a decoration, of retro, of homage, like having a painting, like having art, but you can actually play with it. So you can have your modern game consoles running all, the two moderns, the Switch and your PS5 or Xbox, playing games digitally, if you want it to be digital. You can be playing your mister and have access to everything and then have that one console that's probably dearest to your heart and building an awesome small or maybe big collection for that console so this is just some suggestions guys for a modern gaming setup so you don't have too much space now i'm going to get into the whole aftermath of this why what is the perks what are the benefits what are the cons of doing this we're going to get into that but uh before i get into that there's one device i want to mention and that is the retro tink 5x shout out to mike g this guy deserves an award i need to donate some money to this guy 
Mike Chi is a godsend. Thank you, Elohim, for giving that man the talents to create the Retro Tink. It's a device that's much more affordable than the HDMI mod. It's a component end device, and with the white right, with the right wiring, you can have your retro console output that component to go through that retro tank with an HDMI, and it's gonna decrease input lag. You can play your punch out, you can play your battle toads right on your NES through one of those systems, your Sega Genesis games. So many consoles have ways to work with the retro tank, and it's also a great solution for having your retro console in high definition because that's the point of this video we're trying to get rid of the crts get rid of the gaming shelves and have more space but still have access to our libraries okay guys so for the final part of this video why would you want to do this i mean we don't all have game rooms everybody doesn't have the space i have friends that have just a small room for their gaming maybe a basement they have to put games in storage they might even have just a room in the attic for their gaming hobby and it's something that is cool and it's fun but some of us don't even have that especially where i live in my city it's really hard really really hard i'm fortunate to have a walk-in closet that's why i could put my games in here i make content so i have space to my right i'm looking right at it i have my setup but to the side i have my crt it's literally in a corner next to my staircase to go to my first floor if it wasn't for the space my crt is going to be in the garage because i won't have nowhere else to put it I can't have games all around my house. Now, if you have that type of option, I'm happy for you. I can only imagine how fun it must be to have a game console in every room in the house. That must be so much fun for a gamer in the gamer's realm. But in a lot of settings, that is not the case. And the reason why I made this video is to help people still have their hobby, still have it around, but don't have it be a distraction to draw people away. You don't want to draw people away. I bring up a scenario where I was dating this one girl a few years ago, as recent as last year I stopped dating her, and she came over and I had about six consoles on my TV stand, maybe more, but, and she says, do you play all of this? Because I don't think you play all of this. I talk to you every day. Where do you find time to play this? And I said, well, I don't play all of this. She says, you shouldn't have all of this out. This is kind of messy. And it was, everything was well organized. And I was like, man. She kind of hit me in the messy part. I'm a very neat, organized guy. I mean, my games and books and movies, everything's in alphabetical order. I'm that kind of guy. Very neat, very clean, very tidy. And that kind of offended me. I'm like, oh, man. Like, really? And I always had that idea, hey, keep the consoles out there you're using. Can't, I can't connect everything. I can't. And that's what made me think about making space and making spacious videos. Instead of having a bunch of bins in my corner with most of my game collection you can just have a few of the must needs of the must wants like yeah hey i want to play castlevania rondo of blood but i don't really need to have my pc engine do all x out right it's a pretty big console sexy console but it's pretty it's uh takes up space it has it stands out but when you can have a mister there right there on your tv there goes your solution pop, pop in the snack adapter get your original controller you won't know the difference with the exception of maybe better audio and better video and in my opinion better audio and better video is not a bad thing at all you know i like games to look better i do i'm the type of guy that hey if i'm going to play a game in 30 frames or i can play it in 60 i'm going to play in 60 it's a better experience some people might not agree but i'm just going with not only mathematics and numbers personal preference i love my frame rates that's that's a t-belly thing frame rates is my thing and this video is here to help you out so you don't stand out and look kind of odd having a big stack of video games right next to your tv where your kids sit down and watch their cartoons or your wife sits down and wants to watch a movie and she has to stare and see three consoles and like 80 games in front of her television and look to the left and see a bunch of more consoles in a display again if your household likes that kind of stuff, kudos to you. But I'm trying to do this for the person with the compact in mind. With these apartments in New York City, the way things are here, and back out in LA, it's the same thing. Miami is getting on this. The big city is starting to suffer from space. We don't all have space for game rooms. We need a safe space. And I'll be honest with you guys, that movie Toy Story was touching. Seeing Toy Story 2... Seeing these figures in the box, the, the grandpa figure, whatever his name was, 
Pete, I think, put a picture of that dude up. It was sad to see that he was confined to this box. And these guys are going to be part of a collection when toys were meant to be played, right? Again, that's that's another topic that we can go way out of line with. So I'm not going to go there. But let's just say games are meant to be played. And it's kind of sad seeing games in a bin. Like, I'm looking over and I see a PlayStation 1 controller in a bin. Again, I'm going to pull that out to record some gameplay. But it's kind of sad knowing that there's no space for you, dude. And this, I think this is the kind of thing where it's like, okay, let's bring these items to a new home. But we still have items in our home. So we can still enjoy these same games that we grew up and love. Have space for the future. And have space for pretty much sauce. You know, you want to throw a party... It doesn't look out of place. You also don't have to worry about nobody trying to snipe a game off your shelf. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, I'm a collector. I play games. I beat games. But I also collect them too. So, I like doing that. But there's going to be a time where I might not have enough space for any more. And I might have to stop. So, until that time comes, I will continue to collect. But one thing I will say. My main TV, my 4K TV, has a pretty clean setup. PlayStation 5. Nintendo Switch, Sega Saturn. I don't have the uh, I don't have the Mister there because I have the Mister in my living room. My living room only has a Mister hidden behind a Blu-ray player. Yep, it's hidden behind a Blu-ray player. I do have a cool Virtual Boy consoleized on my TV, so I have two retro consoles. So sue me, T Bell. You have you don't have a Mister. You have a bunch of big bulky consoles. I get it. I'm guilty in my in my situation now. But that's me. That's what I wanted to do here. But I prefer to have a mister in place of one of the other consoles. So when that Saturn core drops, that Saturn will be pulled and the mister will be placed. That's simple because I'm, I'm really into Saturn right now. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this video. I know it's a long one, but I had to get in-depth and explain everything. But anyway, let's bounce out of here. That's it for today. It's me, your guy, T-Belly. I'm signing off, y'all. Cheers.